Welcome to 3Mac. Do you want to learn about computational design, advanced manufacturing, materials modeling, or integrity assessment? Then this is the channel for you. I regularly upload new content, so please hit the subscribe button below for regular updates. Hello, welcome to this video. In today's video, we will try to do the failure analysis of the matrix using abstract PM. We will have a matrix with an initial crack and we'll try to see how we can simulate the crack growth in that material, which is part of the SMA base composite failure analysis which we are performing. The loading and boundary conditions are given here. Okay, let's start doing the simulation thing. As you can see on the screen, I created a rectangular part. I will then include a crack somewhere here as they have done in that paper, which I showed in the previous video and then i will define associate that crack with this part and then i will use xfem to basically model the crack propagation all right so first thing is how i created this part so for those who are not familiar you just press create part button you select 2d shell and then you select in this case i just created a rectangular Part which had a dimension of six millimeters in this direction while I'm using uh, around five millimeters in this because I was not sure what was the dimension in this on in this along this edge so once you you press this button and you press done then you will have the part as you see here next thing is to create a crack so again I have created a small crack I can show you what crack looks like this is the crack which is just a line and it is very small so what again you can do is you can use 2d deformable and then wire and then you can select a small line and you can just do this and there's your part four in this in that case i'm using part two once you have created that then you go to the next module which is properties and then you define material properties so what i have done in this case is i have again taken the properties from uh, that paper and some properties I couldn't find there because I'm using a different type of model. So I took it similar properties, but again, the idea is not to use the right properties, just to show you the procedure. So I have used elastic constant as a function of temperature, which will be useful later on when we will be doing thermomechanical analysis at the end, which will be part three of this video when it, when this matrix will be integrated with the shape memory or life fibers. Plastic part again is taken from the stress strain data, which was again given in that paper. And again, it was a temperature dependent data. So that's what I'm using here. For the stress waste criteria, I, I use mechanical and then I go to damage. In this case, you have many different criteria available like these ones. You can also use traction separation based laws. So, so I have used this maximum principal stress damage criteria. They use critical stress criteria using node release technique. I didn't go for that because XFEM in my opinion might do better job or you can use cohesive model as well or you can use node release technique as they did which was an older version of abacus and they didn't have xfem or even cohesive models were very new at that time and people were only using subroutine uel subroutines at that time so i have used a value which was again the value which they used 60 megapascals for dam damage evolution part this was not discussed there because they just released a node as soon as they reach to the stress value so in this case we have to define this so i'm using this value again you can use a very small value as well you might come across some convergence issues and i will show you some of the ways how you can do it or you can look at my damage model video which is shown here and where i have discussed all these convergence related issues and how to eliminate those all right so these are the properties i have defined and then i have nothing else to do i'll just go to part one which was this part I created a shell section which is this one by just pressing create shell homogeneous and then if you look at this so I selected this property there uh, solids homogeneous sorry because it's a plain strain case and then you can see I have assigned it to this component here that's pretty much it so you see the color change shows that it was assigned to this this is how you assign the properties again i have tutorials on how to assign different properties to different sections so you can have a look at that then i came to the assembly module and i i bring both the parts together by selecting them here once i have brought them here because the, the both parts are not aligned so i have brought this part to this aligned it at this position so i just translate 
that component from that point to this point again i have done a lot of uh, tutorials on that so i hope you guys know it otherwise you can look at those videos that how to arrange parts in, in an assembly module then i go to the step module and this is where you have to be careful so first thing is i am using a static general step you can just press create button and this window will come up so i have turned on the automatic stabilization option because as soon as your material will start to fail you will come across negative stiffnesses and it, your, your solver will struggle to converge so that's one thing you have to do also i use a very large number of increments so that if you go to a very large number increment due to the convergence problem it can sustain those otherwise it will just stop after 100 or whatever number you have given it here also minimum i have reduced it to one exponent minus 12 because sometimes it can take long and also initially i start with this and then i say that maximum use this I, you can use one as here as well if you want to do it but it will keep on doing this if you come across uh, convergence during this time you can what you can do is uh, you can go to the general solver again this requires very expert knowledge on these solvers and everything so i would not suggest if you are new use it but if you are want you can go to this and you can see it's giving you that warning as well that don't do don't change anything at all and here you can basically play around with line search so you can enable line search in algorithm if you want i have enabled it but you can live without that as well also i have included in a I have increased the number of iterations as well so that to because once it's in the downhill direction when the stress is dissipating uh, reducing because of the damage it should be able to survive but if it doesn't in this case it will not require but I am just trying to show you you can just disable it if you want all right then for the output you need to ask for different types of output for XFEM so I have output I have asked for the status of the XFEM I have asked for the element output for this normal elements as well but not useful in this case also i have asked for this which normally people ask phi and psis and also the damage initiation criteria that where you the damage how much damage has been initiated so this is what i have asked for other than that i don't change anything here then i go to the interaction right and this is where you basically define the crack so you had this crack so now you go to special crack and then you say create okay so in this case i have already done it so when you press crack create button it will ask you which geometry you have to select so you have to select this geometry you can see the region and i have selected this region that's why it's colored then you click on the crack location and then you select this crack which i have already selected like that right so once you have selected that then rest is just fine other than that you see there is nothing i have done here nothing is there as well so so now abacus knows that okay how to define or where is the crack all right and what else if i'm not forgetting anything yeah so then i have used the same boundary conditions that they did so i have fixed it from the ball left hand side and i'm pulling from this side with some displacement boundary condition and i am also fixing the bottom part in their case it was not clear to me if they have fixed it or not but to be on the normal tension type tests i think i believe it should have been fixed in the vertical direction otherwise you can just fix this corner as well if it was not all right then mesh again the meshing is normal plane strain element so you just first do the seeding sorry you have to select the part seeding and then i am using a seed of 0.1 and then i just use the element type which is plane strain you see plane strain standard element which are linear and reduce integration and what else i have to do i just go to the job and then i submit the job so once you submit the job i have terminated it as you can see it will start to run and it will be finished in a quick time so let's do it see how it goes so i started it you can then monitor what's happening with your job and You will see it goes up really fast and you will see sometimes there are use here this means that point might be the place where your elements start to delete or your stiffness starts to get negative in those elements which are failing you see here a lot of them and that will cause the time increment to go down in many cases then again when it becomes stable where your next element is loading then it's fine but as soon as it starts to fail you will again see some some issues with the convergence and then again it 
it is for it as well so solver is okay because we have used stabilization option and i'm using line search as well so it seems to be okay to me right now and hopefully it will go through everything well so if you i think by this time the failure has already occurred and it has already gone through the critical area and that's why you see the time increment has reached to the maximum one so let's go and see how the results looks like so if you if you look at this so you see the crack has already propagated so if i if i just go to the star then you see the crack was initially here and you will see stress concentration at this crack tip here you see this is the crack tip initial crack tip and if i play the video now so as the booting starts, your crack is there, everything in stress concentrations are there and as soon as you reach to the 60 or something, the crack starts to propagate and you can see it's propagating okay. In between it slows down because you have plastic behavior as well so your crack tip might be blunting at that time. So that will, that normally so you have a crack propagation, then arrest, and then propagation due to the ductile sort of damage. But you see, I mean, it's working fine, and your crack is propagating okay, and it finishes on time as well. So it doesn't take long. I don't have to run for the whole one second because it has already finished. Oh, the whole crack is propagated through the material at around 0.14 seconds. So I hope this makes sense. And next time when I come, I will integrate this component, this matrix with the fibers, which I built in the part one of the video. And then we will repeat the same exercise, how to do it. I think everything is the same. You just need to put the fibers here and, and then constrain it with the borders of this matrix as they did. But again, there are no so many assumptions which are there and we need to really carefully do assume those, so as I said, it's not only the process you have to understand but also the overall assumptions which are made and what are the justifications for that that's the critical part so approach is very important so try to we will try to discuss that in the next video so i'll see you in the next video thank you very much